and I, I think that's an early 90s. Uh, I don't yeah. know exactly when that ad came out, but I yeah, know. Yeah, we talked about it. We were in uh, just at the, in high school. Yeah. Because yeah. we it watched very... a lot of TV because that's just what you did. We had that's cable. We did. Yeah, that's we didn't have did. the internet. No, we didn't have the internet. No. So you watched a lot of TV, and that commercial was all. Matter of fact, not only was that commercial played a lot, but people would say it. No, you weren't saying it. Like, hey, hey, like if you were having tacos, so I pulled out some some sauces. Like, hey man, we we just got there. <laughs> <laughs> so so it was a very very popular, uh, Vi- successful viral commercial. Yeah, it was a of successful the commercial. Yeah. It wasn't on par with Where's the Beef, but it was it was up there. <laughs> oh, no. So anyway. Um, yeah, he got ran out of town. But so you're left with either Kasich or Trump. Now let me throw this one at you. The the numbers that were voting for Republicans in New York State were dramatically low compared to their overall population. Well, it's, it's yeah, absolutely, it's going to be. So my theory is this: Did you know that Trump's own children are not allowed to vote for him in the primary? What? They can't vote for him. Why? They were registered as Democrats. Ah! And they missed wah, the deadline. Wah, wah, wah. Turns out the deadline to register to vote Republican in New York State was a long time ago. Wow. Okay. And okay. they missed it. How many New Yorkers in the state of New York missed that deadline? And oh, the, by the way, not, not thinking, not knowing, they not needed knowing, that. had no idea. Trump's own oh. children didn't even know. All right. Oh. That being said, that being said, that that deadline does not apply to the general election. You can vote for either right. Hillary or Trump, assuming that he's going to be the or whatever the GOP nominee is going to be. Paul Ryan. <laughs> they can vote for either of them in the general election, no matter which party they're affiliated with. OK. So that being said, there's going to be a lot of people that could not vote for Trump in the primary that are going to be able to vote for him in the general. That's going to make a huge difference. And also, I did some research, and you'd probably like to hear this. I was like, what's going on with New York? The numbers are low for the primary, and there's people reporting, what difference does it make the Democrat, Joe Blow, Mickey Mouse, whoever it may be, if they got a D by their name, they are going to landslide New York State, Let right? Going, that in California. Oh, that's what the the uh, that's what everybody, all the experts are like. Of course. So I said, let me look at some numbers. So here's the numbers going backwards. So I said, what what's going on with New York? So in the 2012 New York general election, Romney lost two to one. So 66 percent, roughly, went to Obama. Only 33 percent went to Romney. Okay. So I said, let's go backwards. What about Obama versus McCain? Turns out McCain lost roughly 60 to 66 percent to 30 to 39 percent. What about Clinton? So you go back, well, go back to uh, George W. Bush. Oh, dub, dub. G dub lost by uh, less than 60 percent, but not much. It was like 54 to 59 percent, something like that. Go back four more years to when G dub won it against Gore. It was about. 55 to 59 percent so i'm like you know that's not that bad go back to um uh herbert walker bush yeah oh clinton i'm sorry go back to clinton go back to the clintons clinton roughly won same neighborhood around that 54 55 to 59 percent and then you go back to uh herbert walker bush and he wants he won new york state and you go back. He won it. He won it, and and um, well, the, okay. Let me back up. This was when Perot ran. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you. What, Perot what got that, a yeah. giant chunk of New York State, and so uh, Herbert Walker Bush won New York with like a forty-five percent. Uh, wow. Yeah, rate. Right. That's when Perot ran. Wow. Then he won New York. Go back to Reagan, and Reagan wins New York State. No kidding. Yeah. So. Well, oh, well, n- not no kidding. No, I think Reagan took all the states. But Except for one, one, Minnesota or something like that. I, I, I mean, I, it's been a jihadist state even back to the 80s. Yes. Flat out. Minnesota is is little ISIS. 
And they've spilt over to uh, Michigan and uh, Dearborn, uh, Michigan. Oh, just, yeah. yeah. So that being said, um, it kind of makes me wonder. Okay, I did state this on Twitter. If Trump can win New York after this slow creeping up of an overwhelming major- majority of Democrat voters or people that vote Democrat all the way, if you look at all the different elections over the past uh, each of the four years, all the way back to 1980, for him to reverse that completely in this election will definitely go down as one of the biggest upsets I have ever heard of in politics. Because, well, except for Reagan I mean, with it. Well, but see, when Reagan did it, when in it, '80, when he was running against Carter, mm-hmm. everybody kept saying in the primaries for the Republicans. No, Reagan will lose to Carter. We can't nominate Reagan. All the numbers oh, show yeah. that he will lose in a landslide to Carter. Yeah, uh, a lot of people do not remember this because we had Reagan as a president for eight years. So it's a little bit of a revisionist history uh, based on the fact that we did actually have him as president. He was the extremist when he ran. He ran in 76, and they were all like, what? This guy's an extre- extremist. Forget him. Then when he ran in 80, like you said, they were screaming that he's going to have his fingers all over the red button to, to cause nuclear annihilation, and they were worried about it for the first four years of his presidency. It turns out he was employing, executing a plan specifically to defeat communism in Eastern Europe and Asia, which was the fall of the Soviet Union, and it worked. Do you remember Phil Collins? Uh, oh, uh, Land of Confusion. <laughs> Land of Confusion. 1986. That was what everybody thought of Reagan. Yep. At the very end of that music video <laughs> that was played on everything, it, it wasn't played on the internet. It was played. Oh, probably on, not the internet. On a TV, if you had. Cable. A CRT. CRT TV. Yes. Cathode ray tube. <laughs> That's the big cubicle heavy thing made out of glass. Yes. And they played it on a on a on a channel called MTV. By the way, MTV is still around. They're the ones that put the viral video up of Tupac. MTV do they still play music videos? No, no, no. They stopped doing that decades ago. Oh. Well, cause okay. Yeah, they okay. stopped doing that. But <laughs> back when they did play music videos. Right. Um, by the way, Land of Confusion, um, once a year, MTV would do the top 100 countdown. And at one point, they did the top 100 of all time. And sometime in the late 80s, it was like 89, 88, they did the top 100 videos of all time. Land of Confusion was number one that year. And it was like 89. Well, that must have been. Well, then that was the last year Reagan was president. It was like 88 or 89. Yeah. And, so th- so yeah. it's like the whole video is a caricature of different people, but the majority of the characters. And he means it's, that it's, literally. Okay, okay. Back in the day, we didn't have CGI. So they used puppets. <laughs> they were actual puppets, but the puppets looked like a caricature. Right. So it was of the literally. Person. Right. right. And these were all real world leaders. Gaddafi and, was in there. Right. At the beginning was Reagan. It opened with Reagan. Then it, at the very end, it Margaret closed. Margaret Thatcher was in there. Yeah. It closes with Reagan as he's in bed with his wife and Nancy. And they, they're pulling the covers taut. And they're turning out the light. <laughs> and Reagan turns out the light by hitting the red nuke button. By axe, because he's senile. Yeah, the buttons are right next to each other. Right. There's one that says Wasn't like his teeth in a glass of water. Or probably. Something. It yeah. Was, oh, they were. Let me tell you. You should go look at that Genesis yeah. Land of Confusion or Phil. Con- I think it was Genesis. Genesis Land of Confusion. Is it is name. Genesis. Yes. Yeah. Genesis Land of Confusion. It's a a really funny. I thought it was hugely entertaining. I, I loved it. I was in junior high yeah. at the time when it came. Actually, when it came out, I'm a, I was in elementary school. Hey, man, this is as good as the the Muppets. Yeah, I was watching. Check this it, out. I thought it was cool, but I, little did I realize that it was just propaganda. Uh, yep, certainly. I mean, it was just par for the course to destroy the conservative, strong, strong-willed, strong mind leader 
of that, that was Ronald Reagan. We have to tear him down. We have to destroy him. And we have to tell everybody that he's going to destroy us. So if this sounds like we're talking about Donald Trump, uh, it's kind of juxtaposition. I mean, it's about the same thing right now. Yeah, it, it is. Um, a lot of people th- thought would look at Reagan's rhetoric and say, this guy's dangerous. And that's what exactly what they're saying about Trump. But tr- if you know anything about Trump and you're gonna and you evaluate him fairly, you know he's employing the art of the deal. And what are some of the things that he says in the art of the deal? They say ask for three times more than what you're really wanting to get. Well, that's rhetoric, right? Right. When you say, um, you know, I'm gonna destroy you guys if you don't get what I want. It's just we know that he's not gonna pull the trigger on that, right? You know, he's just telling you that to make you uh, compromise to a position that's favorable to him. Correct. So, um, and if you called him out on it and said, you know what, I think that he's bluffing, you'd probably be right. And he's but, not going but to. But how far is he going to bluff? How far he, can you get him to come that's down? That's when he says, always be willing to turn around and walk away from a deal. Always. And that's amazing because he has in the past. Uh, one time I heard him say he'll only make a deal if he knows that he can cover that loss. If if that loss would be too much, he'll walk away from it. There's a big do it. imminent domain uh, controversy where an old woman wanted to stay in her house. And he offered her way too much money, way too much. And when she still said no, he turned around and walked away and she got to keep her house. And it and he he describes it now as being a huge favor that she did for him because he would have lost a lot of money had he gone through with the project that he wanted to do on her property. So by walking away, and you know what, she she took a big loss because she was going to get way too much money for that property. Well, and look at what is that property worth now? Only what it was, way but less than what he was going to pay for but it. You're, but you're taking her home. Yeah, and he, let me tell all what you. What about cru- the children living in her home? For all you cruise people, they'll be out on the streets. I, I got. So should we go right into our our cruise uh, versus uh, Trump yes. stuff? And well, good I, segue here. And I just wanted, when you're ready for it, I've got the soundbite of Cruise on Hannity's talk show. Oh my gosh, I, I didn't even write that down on my show. This was this was big news this week. Hannity, Huge. it'll give you a little teaser. Hannity rips Cruz a new a-hole. <laughs> Rip, it was shocking. I'm sitting here just casually listening. I was actually working and when it happened, I was I stopped what I was doing. I said, I in fact, I stopped what I was doing. I think I shut the machines off, whatever, and I immediately got on Facebook and said, somebody needs to find this soundbite and post it because Cruz got ripped, and I don't ever do that. I don't ever stop everything I'm doing. I got your mental message, (laughs) and for those of you who want to be on top of it as well, follow us on Facebook.com backslash Smith Radio. Right. right. So, yeah, I actually took time. It was that big that I, I stopped everything I was doing to take the time to break the news on Facebook. So definitely follow us. And uh, so anyway, um, yeah, so the cruise people, I know I know that they, they have good intentions and I know they think they know what they're doing and all this, but their lack of understanding of a Trump supporter is really hurting their cause. I went to a GOP local meeting this past week and there was a knockdown, drag out, shouting match. No. It was totally one sided. It was a cruise supporter shouting everybody at this meeting down, just shouting them down. Really? Yeah. She said she was calling everybody out on their conservatism, on their knowledge of the Constitution. And she was echoing what I see from cruise supporters on Twitter. They truly believe. That the reason that that people that people that claim to be conservative or are saying that they're Republican, and the reason those people who are supporting that they, they support Trump but not Cruz is because they are um, not real conservatives. They're actually liberals, or they don't know what it means to be a conservative, or and or they don't know anything about the Constitution and that they should read it, and they'll tell you. All the time. You know what? 
you need to read the Constitution. Because if you did and you understood it, you wouldn't support Trump. You'd be supporting Cruz. That's what they say constantly.